Okay. All right, well, it's four minutes past, so um, let's get going. So I'd just like to introduce Dr. Asif Gill from um, University of Technology in Sydney, and uh, he's going to talk about his Dialogue Architecture course. Thanks, Asif. Over to you. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Andrew, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, the topic is kind of, uh, uh, I would say that in trends now, there's the data and the data uh, in particular, the data architecture, information architecture. So I, I, I call that information and close bracket data architecture because I believe uh, data is an implicit part of information. So when we are discussing information, we are implicitly discussing data as a part of it. Uh, uh, so that, that's the uh, uh, mindset behind it. So as Andy said, I, I work at UTS. Uh, I lead DG SAS Lab, uh, which focuses on digital strategy, architecture, and solutions. And as a part of that, UTS is that we are uh, number one university in terms of tech, at least. Uh, and uh, all, my whole uh, uh, work around is a data, and in particular, data strategy, architecture, and solution in the digital environment. Uh, just giving you some background. Uh, what kind of a work involved when we talk about digital data or architecture. So when we are architecting data or information, uh, we are looking at really data and information in the ecosystem context, which is a digital ecosystem context, where it is by default, uh, we assume data will travel beyond the boundary of a single enterprise. It will be shared. So that's different from when you design architecture of the data or information within the single environment or single enterprise boundary. So as soon as it leaves the boundary, it quite gets complicated. So in our lab, we study uh, information and data, which is a part of the information science discipline. We look at that uh, agile methods for handling data. Uh, and then we're looking at the information quality and governance. We also look at the information privacy, security ethics in this lab. We also look at information modeling and design part of the, uh, 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 the data and information. Also, we look at the strategy and architecture of the data and information as well, which is a today's topic is actually. And we also look at the visualization and analytics of the data information and integration and overall information management. So this is a kind of all things around information or data we deal in, uh, in this lab. Uh, so, uh, the question is that I think uh, uh, we have a full two day uh, uh, workshop is planned as a part of the data modeling uh, zone uh, conference, uh, which is a scheduled towards the end of June. Uh, as you probably, some of you have already seen that probably maybe on the web or LinkedIn. So I'm just gonna highlight a few things in today's presentation uh, where the detail would be in that two day course. Uh, it's about the knowledge area. When we look at that, uh, uh, data landscape, information or data, what are the different roles involved and where the architect will fit? And you can see that when we're looking at the information and data, we're dealing with a lot of things. Uh, uh, let's say we're looking at the policy, principles, standards, data or information patterns, reference model, strategy and architecture, which is today's topic. And then information design, which is different from actually the architecture. A lot of people confuse the information design uh, because initially information architecture or data architecture emerged as a information design in 70s or 80s. And uh, then later on, it became more strategic in nature and more business oriented. And that's what we call information uh, architecture is uh, more towards that. Uh, design could be a little bit more uh, low level modeling. Uh, of the data or information. And then how we manage that, integrate transformation, sharing interoperability, and all those things, we, we look at that. So different roles at, attached to that, it's not a one person's job. Uh, some of the roles are there uh, if on the data side, architects, data engineers, data modelers, data stewards. And on the other side, we have data scientists and data analysts who actually consume or use the data for analytics, insights, and actions. So really is before we get to the stage of analytics and inside and action, we really need to be able to understand our data environment and being able to design or architect that data environment so that the data, the data environment or data architecture can manage that is fit for purpose of the analytics. So a lot of work happens here before it jumps over here. Uh, I would say that rule of 80, 20, 80% work is done around here where 20% work is done over there. 
So that's where the architect role really becomes really important. They're looking at the overarching corporate data or enterprise data and linking it with the strategy uh, and then downstream their uh, data uh, uh, or information roadmaps and solutions as well. So really architecture is a kind of a meat in a sandwich as a role point of view. And uh, in my experience of last 20 years or so, uh, I think we have a shortage of data information architects in, uh, uh, in industry. And uh, we really need those people to come up and being able to train and skill, uh, gain skills in that. Uh, now, what is in the architecture itself when we're looking at that? Uh, uh, I call that secure information data architecture component. So essentially, uh, information security sometimes is considered a kind of a separate from information architecture, which is okay. But really the both disciplines of information security and information architecture, they need to work together. They need to be integrated together. So that's where it is secure information data architecture, we call it because security or protection needs to be part of a, the design of the architecture in, embedded in the all the layer of the architecture. That's why protection security is really important. Uh, but if you look at the very high level, what are the, when we talk about architecture of the data or information, what are the really the components we need to deal with it? So there are five very high level components we're dealing when we're looking at the secure information or data architecture. One is architecture is about describing, understanding the enterprise information or data structure, which include the elements in your environment, identifying those information or data elements, their relationship, their grouping, and also not only those information structure, but also the structure who use them, like organization structures, team structure, in an ecosystem where there will be multiple actors accessing that data as well. So we're really, really looking at the structure which is uh, deals with the information and the uh, structure which are actually using the information structure itself as well. So that structure has for, further some behavior as well, like any architecture, like the building example, you can take that. Building has a behavior or use case. So information has a use case of behavior or its process. So here we're looking at the structure uh, which, uh, which is being processed by the certain behaviors or processes or use the process which involve your information management, information integration, classification, sharing, storage, you name it. So we really need to look at the information behavior across the enterprise as well. And when we talk about the information ecosystem architecture, we're looking at beyond the boundary of the enterprise. So behavior or process, it process a structure and they produce some value proposition where we're looking at really what are, what are the different information or data products or services being consumed or produced by the enterprise within operating in the ecosystem. So really we're looking at what is the value proposition? Yes, we understand the information structure. We understand its behavior, but what is really a value for us? Why are we doing that? And that's where we're looking at the value proposition information or data products or services we need to, which we need to design. And that's also described as a part of the architecture as well. And most important thing is that there's certain purpose behind that regarding the structure, behavior and value proposition all have attached a purpose, which we call information purpose. And that's very really information architecture is linking back to the information or data strategy. And information data strategy is a part of the bigger IT strategy or a business strategy, wherever it sits in your own organizations. And finally, we also need to look at the protection of the structure, behavior, and the products as well. So we're looking at the overarching protection, which involves security, privacy, ethics, and all these things around uh, the safeguarding of the data or information from risk, vulnerabilities, and threats. So this is all about very much uh, uh, the five components of any information data architecture at the very high level. And your architects in your organization should be able to process that data and being able to design the data architecture using these five type of components. In the course, we will discuss in detail how we go about it, but I'm just introducing you uh, in today's uh, 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 webinar. Uh, what, what we really mean by data architecture. A lot of people have a lot of confusions around that. Uh, another thing I mentioned that 
uh, data sharing is by default in the current modern world of digitally connected world. So we have an ecosystem perspective where different day actors, ecosystem actors, including enterprise, say the enterprise data here, like suppliers, partner, competitors, employees, volunteer, customers, users, other people, communities, regulators, all they actually interact with your data. So we need to consider data being a part or information being a part of the whole ecosystem when we design the architecture. We can't just think of the data or assume the data or information will stay in the boundary of the enterprise. So that's really a mindset. Second thing is that increasingly we're becoming digitized and enterprise architecture and within that information architecture and data architecture is becoming so critical because we being digital or digitization generating a huge amount of data. If you do not handle the data or information as a strategic asset, that's gonna be a really challenge for us. And that's where we need to have a data or information strategy and the architecture to utilize that strategy of the data and information. And digital asset in terms of our information or data, all those products which we build as a part of the, our architecture, that's really looking at that. And once we look at that, what information assets or digital assets we have, we also look at the technology which actually enables us to handle or process or store or integrate or share that data or information. That's also part of our uh, architecture as well and then you name it. And the most important in the architecture is that actually the information and data. And information and data, uh, I call that information is a collection of data elements. So each information element, one element could have a multiple data elements which are linked together and whose life cycle is managed uh, as a group within the information elements. So that's how information is uh, defined. Data is an implicit part of information and it's linked as you can see the map as well here. Uh, as we increasingly digitize, more information data is being produced and more challenges we have. If we are, don't have the architecture practice from information data point of view set it up internally, that's really we're calling for a disaster. We will be developing the Hawk applications, analytics and algorithms, and we will be sub-optimizing the information landscape internally. So really we need to understand a holistic uh, design or architecture of the information within our enterprise and its connectivity to outside the enterprise world as well within the ecosystem. And if you look at a digital ecosystem example, it's really about the application of the technology and looking at really integrating and utilizing digital data information technologies in everything, including the information. And that's where we're looking at the digital capability. And digital ecosystem actually looking at the different actors, they interact with each other via different interfaces for certain outcomes. So really, when you're looking at the ecosystem view, you are actually looking at different actors and during those actors interaction, you use and consume or produce or collect data and information. And your architecture needs to be more interaction oriented architecture, which look at the, the data in use and how to handle the, that data and how to design the architecture of that. That's really a digital ecosystem view of the data architecture. Uh, there are many examples of the digital ecosystem, you may be wondering. So we will be looking at the automobile, agriculture, banking. So different domains and they have their own digital ecosystem. So it means we are looking at different domain uh, data. Uh, and those domains might be interacting as well. Uh, might be agriculture domain is interacting with the banking domain, right? From insurance purposes point of view. And uh, 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 other, other, uh, other domain uh, come into play as well. So we're looking at something digital ecosystem, but also inter digital ecosystem as well, how the data could be shared for secondary purposes, for other purposes. So really data is a complex piece and we really do need to understand its, uh, 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 its existence within our digital ecosystem. So the question is that if you are being a part of a larger ecosystem, uh, how would you identify the data or information? So really, we need a, some kind of a lens. Information data is everywhere. So here in the lab, we have developed and used, reused and enhanced this lens where we use organism, organism oriented approach. And organi organisms are actors, humans, uh, which could be non-humans, like organizations which are made of humans, animals, plants, all these organisms which they interact with each other, they produce or, uh, uh, produce or consume or 
or collect data from each other. And they all happens at a certain place and time and they interact with certain things. So all these nine items or lenses uh, can be used to identify information which is subject to design or architecture uh, in your ecosystem. Uh, that's a really first step. And that's the identification lens. You can see that here. Uh, I just applied here and it starts from organism. And from here, you identify the organism in, the, in your ecosystem and look at that, what data they share, consume, or manage. And that could be relevant to a place, time, things, and even in all these things. And once you identify the data really in your ecosystem, then you really need to organize it. And that's part of the architecture as well. So an element of information identified in an enterprise could be part of some generic topic. So topic is a collection of elements. And then those elements could be included in different subject areas. So subject area can have elements from multiple topics. So really, once you identify, we really need to organize. Once you organize that, then we need to classify how sensitive is this data I'm dealing with that. As soon as you identify the data, organize it, and we really need to look at that, how we classify it. Is it open data or it's very confidential or sensitive data? And then you look at also as a part of that is at which stage the data is at the moment, life cycle. So is the creation stage and all the way to purge or recycle. So data has goes through different stages and these stages are very data or information centric. You can see that here, I did not use anywhere something called storage. Storage is a process or behavior, it's not a life cycle. Here, I did not talk about any secondary thing, only discuss the information element, which is created, collected, classified, secure, prepare, release, access, used, archive, purge, and recycle. So really you're looking at information or data element centering approach recycle rather than a technology centric. That's really important differentiation. And when you classify, you also look at the, whether data use or, uh, or uh, stored or access in an ethical manner. So really someone needs to understand a data subject rights. And there's a lot of uh, other things around that. And also we need to look at the, what risks are attached to our information when we treat information as asset. It's all about understanding your risk, reducing or minimizing risk, which can be exploited by different threats and enhancing the resilience. So really we're looking at balancing risk and resilience when we're dealing with the information protection of your, uh, in your environment, in the ecosystem. And that's a really, really difficult thing. And finally, when you look at that, the protection part of it is that we really actually embed your security across or privacy or protection across all the layers of your architecture. If I start the data interaction happening here in the value network ecosystem, we need to implement security and access there with the data. Also look at the, the identities of those actors and how they have access to your data or information and data information from platforms and platform having infrastructure, digital data infrastructure, and then you have the data center or facilities or physical places where the data exists or even the cloud. And important is that when we look at that, within the ecosystem data is shared. And that's a very, really we need to understand the data in the ecosystem where you can see different organizations around here. They manage the data at a different life cycle. And you can see that here, let's say city council, transfer for New South Wales, customer information, customer services, ATO, revenue New South Wales, they're part of a bigger ecosystem, government ecosystem, and they need to share data. But then they need to track the data lineage when data move from here to there. Who owns the data when the data leaves your boundary? What are the compliance and governance and privacy and digital identity aspects of that? So the data architecture, information architecture needs to deal with all these things. Someone may release data here, which is at the release point of the, uh, at the data life cycle, but someone will be collecting. So data also changes its life cycle stage as well as soon as it leaves one organization to another. So how are we gonna have a data at the multiple stage, life cycle stage in different organization? How you deal with that? Data architecture, information architecture need to respond to that. And that's where I will say that information data life cycle journey we need to understand in our architecture where we have the purpose around each cycle Actors involved in the data with the each cycle, interface processes, technology, facility, and we need to understand security, privacy, I think across the board, across the life cycle of the information element. 
is quality audit and compliance is governance management and administration of that information element. So it's really, you can see that here. I did not use much of a technology slangs, data breaks or cloud era or, or data fabric or other thing. I just want you to focus on the information element, data elements and itself its design because a lot of time we get lost in those different technology rather than looking after the data. And uh, here's an example of uh, the modern data architecture where we have data uh, could be stored in different places sources and we need to have a data fabric or data virtualization layer design, which rather than moving the data into different layers, we just uh, 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 allow this to accessible via sharing uh, layer. And uh, information data architecture an approach we'll, which we'll discuss in the course. We're looking at that information is really uh, uh, technology agnostic and then leads to the data. And we look at the whole architecture of that from an information point of view. And we'll discuss in that course, how we identify stakeholder concerns and how we build the information architecture using models and other things. And how we're looking at the information sourcing, integration and consumption models. And also in that course, we look at that, the virtualization as well. We're also looking at the, how the data architecture roadmap is developed as well for organizations uh, based on their history, current transition and future states. And uh, also we're looking at the privacy laws and regulations in that course. We look at the privacy standards as well, impacting data. We look at the industry and technology privacy standards as well, part of that. We look at also how the protection legal model will work for some organization when dealing with the data. We also look at that uh, privacy of information and what is the documentation compliance required. You can see that being a part of data architecture is quite a challenging thing because you need to look at after all the regulatory and compliance requirements as well. And finally, I would say that beyond digital and data, all what we needed is that we need to have outcomes, data and information for outcome for purpose. And that's what it doesn't matter. And when we look at the data architecture, we need to look at that across the data architecture being a part of a digital architecture and linked to the strategy and the solutions and the outcomes. Uh, and that's where I probably will stop here. The, some of the case study uh, we have done. Uh, and I think I wanna just wanna stop here. I know we had a half an hour. So I'm happy to take any question if anybody has. So if you got any questions, just uh, put them in the chat. Um, so at the beginning, you talked about, you know, the fact that there's a, a shortage of information and data architects um, in, Australia, well, in Australia, I think worldwide too. So what makes a good, you know, good information and data architect? What, what makes a good one? I think I would say shifting their focus from uh, uh, operational or uh, uh, micro, uh, uh, I would say that a micro level technology view to more about understanding the business information being able to relate to their strategy and outcomes. And that's really, really is a key piece which is missing. You'll find a lot of people being able to help you with the integration, another thing, or database administrator, but this is not about that. This is a little bigger one. We need to handle as an information as an asset. Right. So what, did, um, so what are the, if somebody's going to become a, an, a, an information or data architect, what are the key skills that they need to learn? Uh, I think um, uh, in the beginning, I mentioned a lot of uh, uh, the areas, skills areas identified. Uh, they will be able to understand and contribute towards information data strategy. They should be able to contribute or design policy. Uh, they should be able to have a good communication skill so they can communicate that policy and strategy and also have a good stakeholder management skills, being able to, when designing the stakeholder uh, driven uh, data architecture, information architecture, which is fit for purpose and use. Not necessarily developing uh, uh, thousands of models and diagrams. That, that's probably is data model that can help you, but architecture need to understand that a little bit bigger picture. All right. So, um, I don't know question that comes through at the moment. So, so really this, this, um, do you want to tell us about the course, the course that you're running at Data Modeling Zone in, um, uh, what is it, June, 29th and 30th of June. Well, here's that's, the, that's a two day workshop, correct, yep. So the Data Modeling Zone is a conference for data modelers and data architects, which is an international conference is run in Australia 
the US and uh, the Europe every year. Um, there's a, so ASIF is running a two day conference uh, workshop uh, from the 29th and uh, 30th of June. And then the conference itself is on the 1st and 2nd of July. Um, so if you check out the, the website, all, all the details are there. But um, if you could, you could come along, as I was saying, there's a, a big skill shortage <laughs> in data architecture in Australia at the moment, and it'd be good to uh, see you there. So unless there's more questions popping up, um, and it hasn't been. Oh, there's one. Oh, yeah, this is a question, is this session recorded for members? Yes, it's recorded for members. And the, um, the link, I'll send out the link later today. Um, okay. Is it, can you share uh, some of your slides too? I'll be happy to, I'll be happy to share the slides, yes. Okay, all right. Well, uh, thanks everybody. Uh, thanks for joining the, the webinar. And thanks as if that was very, very informative. And I hope lots of people watch this. <laughs> and thank you very much. They need to, to learn anyway, yeah. Absolutely. Thank okay. you very much. Thanks, thanks everyone. Thanks, thanks Andrew. Bye. Bye.